When I came into the world, constantly say, like as early as like three years old to my grandmother, don't die. I was obsessed with death. I was so afraid of her dying. And I would say, I'm reincarnated. And she'd say, who told you that word? I just kept saying, I'm reincarnated. Look at my hands. I'm reincarnated. They didn't change my hands. Look what I can do with my hands. Hi, I'm Kimberly Meredith, a medical intuitive psychic medium and healer. Kimberly, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Uh, we had a really fun conversation the first time, which was, it seems like ages ago. Uh, <laughs> But I'm very excited to have you back on. So how how have you been? <laughs> um, I've been good. Thank you for having me back on. Uh, my book's been out for, um, you know, I think like a year and a half now, more. Mm. And um, yeah, it's been interesting. Um, things are progressing. I'm doing a lot of um, retreats and conferences and expos. Mm. And people are moving, I think, more into that fifth dimensional vibe. Fifth dimensional vibe. What exactly is the fifth, fifth dimension? Is it just a perspective or is it like literally a place? Um, it Well, it's for me, it's literally the place uh, of healing and um, being more highly conscious of what you're eating and what you're saying and how you're acting to your friends, your relatives, your brothers and sisters and um, uh, you know, for me, it's visually seeing things disappear off your body, like diseases and tumors and energies and negative energy. And, um, so the, because I'm a hands-on healer. What interests me is the part where you say you physically see that. So how do you experience reality? Like every day, how do you see reality? Well, I feel reality like anybody. You yeah. think so, though? I feel like you might see it a little differently, though. No, um, I still got to pay my bills. <laughs> I still got to pay my bills. I still got to have, um, you know, heartache. I still have to, you know, help my family out. I still have to, you know, have everything like anybody else. I have to have, you know, recovering from my own near-death experience, injuries. Um, but when people come to me that need help, um, I am able to help them get into the fifth dimension, which is a healing energy like uh, Mary Baker Eddy or um, any high influence faith healers like Catherine Kuhlman or Edgar Casey knew how to take people into a deep, deep state of higher consciousness. Um, and then you're able to be healed faster. Mm. So did you have those healing capabilities before the NDE or was it the NDE kind of the catalyst? Um, no, I never heard about any of that or practiced any of that kind of stuff before the near-death experiences. No. Mm. So yes, after the near-death experiences, when I started uh, doing these types of energy healings on myself and um, were able to experience that. And now um, I actually slacked off the last three years of doing the laying on hands part um, the psychic mediumship part, um, medical intuitive part, I've been doing, we're doing a lot of, but after COVID, I wasn't doing the laying on hands as much um, with people. And I think I kind of upset my guides because I wasn't doing that. So now I'm out again doing that. Can you upset your guides? Like That's the first I'm hearing of that. Yeah. Really? What happens? Like what happens when they get upset? You can piss them off. Um, You can, all, you can, I feel like, you can upset your God. You can upset Holy Spirit. You can upset God by not listening to mm. your your counsel, your faith. You know what you're doing. You know you don't go with your intuition. Well, they put you in timeout. Like, what do they do? <laughs> um, well, things don't go the. You start seeing your life go in a wrong direction. Can you can you give me an example of this? Right, like since you. Um, I don't know. You're pissing off your guides. Like, what did they? What did they do to you? They, you know. Well, it's just like, okay, I'm going to have seven up and uh, Coke instead of having good Mountain Valley spring water, you're get a really bad stomach ache. 
Mm-hmm. Then you start getting, you know, diverticulitis. Wow. So there's always two ways to go and two paths or I don't remember that book, but it was a really cool book by Scott Peck or something. <laughs> two roads. Or, I remember. The oh name. my goodness. Uh, the low, the, the, the road less traveled. Yeah. Path, yeah. Yeah. The road, yeah. The road less yeah. traveled by Scott yeah. Peck. So yeah, you could go either way. So like, um, we're all here as rock stars, in my opinion, everybody's a rock star in this life and you Everyone has an innate gift ability. So I've been given some extra different types of abilities for me and other people have extra types of abilities for them. So how do I put this? So um, some people don't want to um, take their abilities and go for it. They want to just kind of be lazy and maybe just use one or two of their abilities. So some of the abilities I was given by God, I was using just one or two of them or one of them and not using all of them. So how do you get people out of, out of that laziness? Because I feel like to your point, I feel like a lot of us yeah. have those innate gifts. How do you get out of that laziness? I don't know. It's me to get people out of their laziness. I think it's for people to understand, um, to try to use their gifts as much as they can while they're here right now, especially as we move forward um, and to recognize the gift that God wants them to use the most. So like, I don't know if people, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I feel like people don't understand the gifts that they have. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But it's recognizing. So like for Mm -hmm. me, for me, I was using my two gifts that I use the most, which is my medical intuitive ability. And I was using my psychic abilities to to talk to the afterlife the most, you know, recently. But one of my very strong healing ability gifts is laying on hands and healing people. Hmm. And that gift I have not been using for like the last four years so much. Yeah, but that's because of COVID, right? That's not because of being lazy or is it? Um, COVID's made me fearful of it because I was told you, you can't come close to people and all that stuff. Um, I'm just using me as an example. Sure. Yeah. But there are many people I come in contact with, they'll say, um, oh no, I don't do that because of this. So like you're saying, yeah, they'll have an excuse for not using a gift or not doing it. But, um, I feel that, um, in my book, the awakening of the fifth dimension, the half of the last part of the book is about that main gift of mine being tested, research, all the miracles that people were healed with that. And so um, I feel that I talk to people sometimes say, you know, I come home and I lay on the couch, I'll watch Dr. Phil or I'll watch, you know, murder mysteries and I could be writing or I could be playing some tunes or I could be, tapping into one of those gifts and creating or making, you know, you know, I'm a builder or I'm an architect or I want to start my own construction company. And, you know, you're right, Kimberly, I'm not tapping into that gift that God gave. I feel like I should be taking notes right now. Like, I feel (laughs) like you're hitting on so many great points, like to get out of that laziness. It's to not do the easy things that we have been programmed. Like you sit on the couch and you watch Netflix and they just keep showing you advertisements for other shows. And they show people basically sitting on the couch, watching TV a lot. Right. Like in it's programming us to think that this is a normal way of being right. Like, I feel like tapping into that ability, which you talk about, people don't know because they're not exposed to those kinds of things. You know, they're more exposed to what society wants to program us to be exposed to. And that's going home and watching murder. She wrote, and if that's still, I don't know. I just remember that from being as a, as a child, uh, (laughs) hearing about that, but uh, yeah, going home and doing the thing that really fires you up, like in the heart space and like, not having a plan, but just following that curiosity and seeing where it goes. And if you do have a gift that's obvious, that's salient to you or to anyone else, and then kind of like nurturing that more so, right? And following your 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 intuition and seeing where it takes you and having faith and taking that leap, right? And I don't know. I just feel like I'm, wow, you just hit on a lot of different things that I have been 
mulling over in my own mind as far as uh you know what that looks like for myself but the laziness part that that is what always gets me because everyone i feel like isn't open to just you just got to get up and go do it right you just go 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 because i feel like some people that's not motivation right like it's, it's harder it's it's sometimes it can be hard to motivate people to do certain things if that makes sense it is that's very very true because it's also the procrastination you may have it in your mind you may write it down you get tired there's so many so many hours in the day you're married you have children you know things are going on you have to buy food groceries you need money things aren't the way they were you know we're taking a dive politically also and you know the energy's diving and then you kind of sit down. If you turn the television on, you're like, oh, you zone out. It feels good. You relax. And then you're like in this vibration. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like this zone of this third dimension kind of feeling. And then you're all of a sudden in this wave, you know. The thing is, though, when you start to get out of that and you get in this other dimension, which is the fifth dimension, where you are being proactive, you are moving some people feel like they're not moving. They're going in this circle. And even if it's like decluttering a room or getting rid of things and moving moving forward, they're, they feel like they're not moving forward, but you are moving forward. So even if you do take a step into doing something that you always wanted to do or try, it actually is very freeing. And say you don't feel like you're even making money at it. And actually, once you start doing it, it will start happening for you. So like me, if I'm going out there, maybe laying on hands um, and doing something free, like some free convention, or maybe working for somebody that's not known yet or doesn't have any money to pay me, um, I feel good. I feel vibrated because I'm working for the Holy One. I'm working for the energy that says they want me to do it. Mm -hmm. And then Say the person on this happened just recently. The person on the table that got on the table, um, she was hesitant to get on the table because I said, um, I feel that you have something. I'm just giving you an example. I did this recently. Um, I went to an expo and the lady didn't have any money for me or anything, and I was just like, wanted to go. And uh then I called a woman on the table and I knew she had a thyroid um tumor like goiter. Mm -hmm. And I said, Would you like us? there's other people too. They want to come up and try the healing, the teaching, because that's what they want me to do now, the guides. And I said, would you like us to lay hands and help you release it off? And she was like, uh, she didn't understand. She was like, what, this could happen? And I said, yes, called Reiki, but laying on hands healing, it's a step higher. And she was scared a little bit. And she's like, okay. So she lay down. She was like maybe almost 70. She opened her hands. We all started oming. And, and some people were praying like um, the, our father and some people were just going, I'm love, I'm light within like maybe four minutes, maybe, or not even like that long, maybe two minutes, it was gone. Wow. It's just completely like silk hmm. and her doctor's been following it. They've been giving her some medicine. They were maybe going to have to surgically remove it. And she got up and she just goes, it's gone. And it was like silk. Wow. And it was just confirmation. That's what I'm supposed to be doing more of and teaching that. And one of the ladies in the audience is a director, a movie director. And she said, if I hadn't been here, I never would have believed this. Sure. That's so fascinating. So um, <laughs> what, what does it feel like when you're laying your hands on someone and you're healing them? Yeah. It, it was interesting you're asking me because I asked the other three girls what it felt like for them because two of them were Reiki practitioners. They said they felt much different when we did this kind of healing um, and we felt it before and after. I always feel like um, a very high lifting energy, like I'm not, well, I'm not there. I feel like I'm off the ground. I feel a tingling sensation going through my fingers and I don't know if you've ever had like, um, would you say like ever been like on a, uh, on a very fast ride, like a Disneyland or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. So like very high up elevated, like an okay. elevated ride. And um, I also, 
when I'm actually praying and laying hands and going through to release it off, it's a way that you do it. So one of the girls that was doing it, she goes, when I was putting my hands down and moving it, it didn't feel like it would release. But when I just kind of glided it off, it felt like that's when it released off. And when the lady was opening her hands and she was breathing, she goes, when I actually took a deep breath and went, <sighs> that's when she felt it flow. So wow. it's actually a particular way they're teaching me to do it. So I probably will write a handbook. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So are you a conduit for, um, I guess that higher consciousness to come through you to heal or are you, are you healing it? You know what I mean? Like, does that make sense? Yeah. So my eyes blink yes and no to answers that you ask me. So the guides communicate through my eye blinking and they're saying that, no, I'm not doing it. I'm the conduit for um, the Holy one to come through, to help do it, the, the energy healing. And they like to teach other people to do this, like, like the Reiki work. This is just the laying on hands work. And they want people to use their hands a specific direction to do the work. Sure. So this may sound like a dumb question, but like, who do you, who do you um, identify as the Holy one? Um, I know some people call God, uh, you know, God, the omnipresent, but they like me to call um, the energy that I'm working with. That's doing this healing, the Holy spirit. Okay. I think a lot of people can probably resonate with that more. So, right. Yeah. Especially with our programming, you know? Um, yeah. So they're saying the Holy Spirit, but they're also saying universal Christ consciousness is okay to say too. They're saying people that want to call it the Christ consciousness. Um, some people, when they get really revved up in the room, when they saw that gone, they start screaming out other things in the room. Like they'll start saying, you know, this is the divine feminine healing, you know, or this is. They want so to they say, start arguing about labels. They will. They will. They'll start saying that this is the goddess energy. This is goddess energy. And they'll start saying different things. Isn't like that, that just so typical of the human being? Like to <laughs> fight over what this this miraculous healing is and what we should call it. Like, come <laughs> on, guys. Like <laughs> let's just yeah. let's not call it anything. Let's just, you know, let's just be in the moment and witness something miraculous that's taking place, right? Yeah. But, it, but what matters is that as long as the person who is having the healing um, and experiencing the healing, and as long as the people that are laying hands are humbled in doing the energy healing, um, you know, are, are experiencing that and they are gracious with that, it will, the people will stay healed okay. and she'll, she'll stay in that dimensional healing. So beliefs have a very um, huge factor in this. Absolutely. And the lady was like, amen, you know, amen. And she was so glorified in it and she's still completely healed. Yeah. Hmm. So How do you override, do you, do you work with anyone in like overriding belief systems at all? I'd say in the nine years that I've been doing my work, um, absolutely. There's been people that believe, people don't believe, people have never been believers, um, I think that probably has been going on from the beginning of time with people that do the kind of work that I do. Absolutely. Right. Like you, you believe in something, then you see something and it's like totally changes. It's like an existential shock almost to where you yeah. just, your reality is totally, your paradigm has changed You're, completely. Absolutely. You are correct. Your belief could change within one second of seeing something that you would be like, I'm an atheist. I would never believe. And then all of a sudden I'm a total believer. I've had people come on the table when I first started, um, say, um, you know, I'm in a gang. I'm a gang member. I don't believe in God. I never will. I had this one kid say this to me and he says, prove to me there's a God. And I said, I'm not here to prove to anybody that there's a God. I'm, I can't say I'm even Kimberly because I'm not, I am a nindy ear. And I came back to do the work of the Lord. And I said, but I'll lay hands on you if you want. He says, yeah, I'm sick. He goes, you know, will you do a healing on me? I said, yeah, but I'm not to prove anything. And he said, okay. And I remember I went across his body and I started doing my medical intuitive work. And I was like, they're telling me you have a gun. You had a gunshot wound here, 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 here. And this was up over his shirt. 
And I said, here, and I was pointing to all the ones and he was like, whoa. <laughs> and I was doing that. And then, and then he goes, okay. And then I went to the area where he was sick. He had a major issue with like diverculitis and some issues with his intestinal tract. And I said, and they're telling me you've had this probably from birth and you need hands-on healing there. And he's like, I do. And then um, I started doing the healing on him. And um, then afterwards he lifted up his shirt in front of the audience and you could see the bullet wounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, and then, and then he was, he's like, I believe, I, I believe. believe, I believe. Yeah. And I did go in and do the whole intestine. I moved it back around um, in his, yeah. Well, I didn't, they did it. How do you uh, communicate with your guides? Do you, do you see them in your physical reality or do you see it through your mind's eye? Yeah, I communicate. It's a very good question. Um, I communicate with the omnipresent, I call omnipresent Holy Spirit every minute, every day, every second, constantly going back and forth, mostly through the process of um, the third eye. Yes. And just um, staying, I like to stay in constant communication and it's through the eyes blinking. Mm, so that's your indicator, right? Like your yes or no is it the eyes blinking. So what if they want to give you more information, like a download, like of like a bulk of information, you know what I mean? And that's my next book. Oh, wow. um, the next book is about the Elohim and the the constant uh, download of multiple soul frequency codes that are coming in. They're communicating me different than they did a year and a half ago. They What's can... Elohim? What is that? That's God. It's another name for God. Okay, because it... I just, yeah, I've just started listening to some people's teachings about that. And um, I just wanted to get your take on it because there's like different interpretations of that. Yeah, it's just another word. Well, it's not just, it's a word for uh, God in Hebrew. And um, they're giving me now very, um, they're, when I do my channeling, they're giving me, they changed the blinking codes. It used to be, you know, yes and no is only that. But now they're giving me codes and frequencies, numbers that are complicated, but not for me. And they're helping people now with their destiny up to 10 years, up to 2031, 32, 33. So like nine years, I think that's about nine years. And they're giving them in multiples of like threes and sevens and eights and nines. And they'll give you, and they also communicate back to me in all these different numbers. And every number has a message about it could be your kids or you or family or what's happening in your destinies and things like that. Really? So numbers indicate what your destinies are up to 10 years? There's tons of information they're giving. Yeah. Every number has an information to it and every number has a frequency to it. Yeah. I it's, want a number. It's funny that like, I think Greg Braden had said that something, someone would come with information like this. Also in the Bible, they talk about codes and frequencies and Bibles and numbers also have these things. And now the guys are coming through and talking about this. So how, when you sit with a client and you go over the destiny points, like how, do, what does that look like? Well, like um, over the weekend at the Jack Canfield retreat, I like go through the room, I'll pick a person out, a person will come up and I'll say, oh, your brother had passed away and he's talking about his death. And then he'll come in with a code and his code was the seven and what his seven was seven, seven, seven for? his seven was standing for Jesus Christ, the Holy spirit, which God's number is seven. And he also was a faithful Mormon hmm. and in his Mormon energy, he um, wanted to say to her that there is no religion and he was saying when he got over to the other side that he saw Christ and he was communicating to her. Now, I wouldn't have known this at all. He's telling me all this to her. And this is his sister. And he was just saying that we are, you know, he was telling me to her and that that he was showing me the sign of the cross. And he was saying the sign because seven means um, calmness and peacefulness and hits his personality. Mm -hmm. And he had a very um un it wasn't he wasn't supposed to die young oh. and then 
he she's she gave up being a Mormon. Really? She didn't want to do that. Yeah. Wow. So, but he 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 was saying that now that he got to the other side, it didn't matter about religion so much. Doesn't matter about religion. What does it matter about? Like our connection. Religion is not as important as the world think it is thinks it is. It's our connection to that frequency, right? Or it's 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 our qualities of choice. It's our it is our self-development. Meaning all religions are going to be one. Hmm. Really? Are, are one you world, one world, one world religion. Meaning when we get to the other side, we're all one. Okay. Yeah. I got you now. Yeah. It's the word religion that keeps throwing me all because I'm like, now I'm thinking about this, like, you know, the soup, right? And then, yeah, yeah. Um, I totally got you now. Same way, same wavelength. Um, so it's so fascinating that these numbers have different meanings and that you get that from the other they side. Do. Um, so your guides, yeah, they give you a number for the individual that you're giving, um, uh, I guess, destiny hints or destiny frequencies or codes for their lives. Now, do anyone ever come to you about how they can, I guess, find their purpose, like find the reason why they're here type of consultation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do what's called soul frequency and soul tie readings. I do them. I'm doing them at the expo coming up at New Living Expo on April 19th. I just did them at the LA Conscious Expo. So you get to my website. Um, I still do my medical intuitive mediumship readings. I, but now I do something called soul frequency readings. Um, so you sometimes it's up to seven codes I'll give you um, in one reading. The first four numbers are fixed numbers that you come in the world with. And then they can go up to the like the next 10 years of numbers that you have. It's wow. a pretty depth reading. It's like an hour reading. It's like a story of you. And it's pretty accurate. So say like, you know, never known you ever. And all of a sudden someone's reading you. And then also I do readings of you, maybe your partner. Sometimes people are getting a divorce or sometimes you're not getting along. There's a reason why your frequency numbers have a pattern. And then I read kids. I read animals. I read energies of work. Sometimes people come to me and say, are these employees, what are their numbers? Why can I trust this person? What's going on? What's behind the energy of this situation? The code has a number and a reason and a frequency to it. Oh, wow. Did you see numbers when you had your near-death experience? Did you have any like, uh, I guess, like download of information or did, did you see your guides at all? Before I had the near-death experiences, about two weeks before, I was seeing 11s everywhere. Mm -hmm. I was seeing multiple 11s. Then I had the NDEs. I was recovering from the subdermal hematomas, all that. Then I started channeling all of the, you know, the, the medical intuitive coming up. Oh, you've, you know, the cancer, the hot flashes. I would know all the frequencies throughout the body, the root causes and all that. Then my work started going into talking to the afterlife. I started you know, really picking that up, you know, so now I'm like a full blown psychic medium where I talk to the dead. I do the medical intuitive, the hands on healing. And now I'm doing the code, the codes now. So I'm doing all of that. You're doing everything. You're just a one stop shop. The codes are, yeah, the <laughs> codes are really interesting, but um, like, so this weekend I was doing a lot of sometimes the medical and I was doing the codes and I was talking to the afterlife, but I didn't do any laying on hands healing. Okay. What do, what do people mostly want? I can't want? do it all. I can't do it <laughs> What do people, like, what's. Take a break. <laughs> what, what are you like? What's the highest, like people, when they come see you, what do they want most of, right? <laughs> they want everything in one hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Most of the time when people come, if I get. You know, because I get a lot of people with cancer. So I people will want to do the medical intuitive, um, overall health and wellness healing. And I'm very, you know, very good at that, putting people on programs with that. I get a lot of spiritual counseling sessions right now uh, because there's a lot of mental health um, uh, support going on with my guides. 
and people want to know about, especially if um, a lot of people are taking their lives. Like, I think it's like every four minutes, somebody's trying to take oh, wow. their life and every 25 minutes, someone succeeds. So yeah. I feel that people want to come to me because they want to talk to their relative that has crossed over and it makes them feel better when I can connect fast. They come in with me fast now and I can make them feel better like this weekend that happened and they were crying and, and feeling good about, I can connect them and they feel happy about that. So that's a lot of people with that. And now the soul frequency numbers, they like that. They like to know where they're going, who they are, what's going to happen. And they feel comforted because 2025 is going to be a little bit feeling it'll, it'll be good about community, spiritual community coming together and being helpful, but it might have a little hiccups financially for people. So people might want to tap more into what they're really supposed to be and do mm -hmm. more of like, you know, so they might be becoming more self-employed. Yeah, for sure. I feel like 2024 has been a wild ride and it's only April <laughs> and we have yeah. some type of eclipse coming that I've just recently, uh, you know, been hearing ton, a ton about like, what are your thoughts on that? I know. Right. That's supposed to be like April 8th or something. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm not really paying, I mean, I'm not really paying too much attention to it. Cause I feel like you just feed right into that. Right. I don't know. I mean, it, it could be something great. Right. I just, um, I'm very hyper aware of my attention and where it goes because i know that where it goes i'm feeding my i'm feeding essentially feeding my power to that right so i i really try to focus within and try to um be aware as consciously as aware as i can so that way i can focus it where I, where it needs to be you're so correct sometimes i don't even like hearing about something like that because you're right then you're focusing on something yeah you want to stay in the positive April 8th is a very good day because that's the day my sister was born and she's the sweetest little angel in the world. Her and I did not have the greatest upbringing. You know, we had to survive together. So we had each other. And um, I know that day is going to be a great day. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. It's going to be a great day. It's, it's you know. going to be an awesome day. And, um, you know, 2024, you know, I know around, um, uh, May, June, July, August, August, September, October, November is going to get going to feel good. It's going to start picking up. And then 2025 is going to have a little bit of bumps, political stuff, you know, things going like that. But then it's going to be, I don't know. I just feel like more community people helping each other. I feel like it's not going to be as bad as we think next year. Sure. Now, when you get these hits, right? Like, are your spirit guides telling you this? Or are you just kind of feeling what the universe is putting out there? Yeah. So people ask me, where should I move? Or who should I go with, out with? Or when is someone coming in for me? All I do is I say the month or I say something and my eyes will say yes or no to it. Or something like right now, like I'll say a month, they'll go no. Or I'll say a frequency to it. Like, uh, someone will say like, um, how is my uh, immune system from one to five? I'll say four or or two and normal, or how is my kidneys? I'll go, you know, one to five. Like, so today I had somebody with a thyroid and I did a one to five on it. And she goes, you're absolutely correct. with mm. my thyroid. So like when I talk about next year, 2025, what's the frequency from one to five? They're saying It's a three really? in, in the middle. Wow. Not going to be a super great year and not going to be a super horrible year, but right in the middle, they're saying. I'll take a, I'll take a, a neutral. I'll take a middle any day of the week after the last let's, couple of years. Let's ask about this year right now. Sure. Guides, how is 2024 going to treat us? I was not hoping for that answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay so they're not giving us the answer we want to hear okay guys once again how is 2024 going to treat us okay so they're 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 not giving us a three <laughs> i don't even want to ask um as long as it's not a <laughs> negative 
right? <laughs> no, we're not in the total negative, but we're like almost at a three, but more like a two, oh. a two and a half. <laughs> we want to get in the middle. <laughs> yeah. It feels like that, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. But yeah. I feel, okay. <laughs> I feel like it's so weird. I've, I've had, I'm having these like little realizations that I feel like individually, we all live in these little own, like our own little pockets, our own little realities, yeah. right? And then it's not until we fully face our attention towards the collective when we start picking up on the collective, right? And so then yeah. that can really destroy your individual reality, whether or not you feed into that, right? So I feel the more that I'm just, you know, I'm not trying to be uh, totally selfish. I'm going to call it sacred selfishness to where I am focused in on my bubble, which is my world. And I'm going to nurture that world and um, not say ignore, you know, the collective consciousness, but I'm going to see it, but I'm not going to be of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So then within your own world, you can understand your priorities, your boundaries, and where to say yes and no to different things. And so some people, like I was, when I first came on, I said, people are kind of decluttering. They're, they're kind of pulling back with some things, maybe going to some things, maybe not doing other things, maybe understanding that this is the time to kind of um, raise your, like, remember I said, like God was saying, Kimberly, you need to do more of this, less of that. Mm -hmm. And that's how we'll make it through to 2025. I, so I hope I fascinating. Some of that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, numbers are so fascinating. I, I want a number. Is there any way you can pull a number for me? Because I yeah. Know. So you came in the world, yes, and they're telling me your number. I'm going to write it down. When you came in the world, we all have a number. Um, the first number for you. They're saying, "Wow." So take a deep breath. They're saying. And I don't remember you ever telling me, I don't remember you ever telling me anything about your background. I, I swear, I don't remember you ever telling me anything, but they're telling me, this is very interesting about you. They're saying, <laughs> oh, that's um, good. you have to tell me. Interesting. So I don't normally get this a lot with people, but. When you came into the world, they're saying you had three, 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 the three, three, threes on you, right? When you came in from the beginning. And a lot of times when people have the three, three, threes, that's the sign of um, blessing and spirituality from the beginning. So like right when you came in, there was either some kind of blessing that you had, some sort of gift special gift that you were given right away. Oh, wow. Then you have the four, which is you like, you do everything from your heart. You're very heart given. You're very like, uh, you like to serve. You like to help people. You're very caring. Um, a lot of people that are the fours are like earth angels. And then you have the sign of the five. And then uh, the five is for you creative. Hmm. you like to be creative does any of that make sense to you yeah it makes sense it's funny because i am the third uh trey is um it means three so three 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 and i'm the third so that's kind of funny that is yeah that's awesome I mean, they didn't even think about it when when i when we asked about your numbers they came right in and said Three three three. Three 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 also is the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. They also talk about that when I call out the threes. They'll mm. say like that. I get chills when I say that with you. And the, you're definitely a four. So when the afterlife sometimes comes in, um, I'll see them hold up four fingers when they do that. When they've crossed over, they'll say, um, tell them they're a four when they're on the other side. That means you're our angel. Oh, you're wow. our angel here on earth to help people. Oh, wow. I love that. Three, three, three. I wonder what gift I have that I don't, just don't know about. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. What kind of gifts do you think? You have a gift they're saying with community. They're showing okay. me the sign of the nine when you just said that. 
You have a gift with nine. Nine means community and family. You like to bring family and community together. I don't know if that's something that you do or besides the show, but that might be in the future even bigger. Sure. No, I've really been toying with, um, cause we're on the East coast. <laughs> well, I'm on the East coast. You're on the West coast. Uh, you guys yeah. <laughs> have a ton of awesome, like, um, like expos and seminars and just get togethers with some great people and spreading that consciousness. Like on the East coast, we don't have that. Like, we, like you want to do what? Like I, I want to have more <laughs> of that. Like I want to build more communities and, and, yeah. and higher energy frequencies on the East coast. Cause I feel like our energy over here is just like, you know, an East coaster when you meet one, right? Like we're all <laughs> like, we got to get it. We got to get there. We got to do this. We got to do this. We got to do that on the West coast. It's more laid back, chill, you know, we'll get it. We'll get it done tomorrow, bro. It's it's totally okay. But I feel like the East Coast needs like some type of slowly but surely awakening to just higher vibes. And I've been really concentrating on like how to build that out, you know, from some a different type of model, you know, that we typically have here. But yeah, building community out. That's awesome. That. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I have more clients. I'm over here, but I have more clients on the East Coast and they fly in to see me and I'm on Zoom more with the East Coast. And I've gone to Omega Center. I've done a couple expos in the East Coast, um, New Life Expo. Okay. Other than that, you're right. There is not a lot of uh, East Coast expos at all. No, and I feel like there should be because I feel like there's so many d possibilities that you can come to on the East Coast. I mean, you got New York, Philly, D.C. I mean, you even got cool places in Florida, yes. Carolinas. I mean, there there is a just a a um, plethora of locations. I'm sure with like you know being close to the ocean like that, I'm sure there is a, a natural frequency that's there just waiting to be tapped into. Oh yeah, it would be so fun, and it should have music too. I oh, love yeah. I love expos with music. What kind of music? I feel like I love all kinds of music. Like my kind of mediumship, I love doing uh, my stuff with music. I used to do stuff with like Matchbox Twenty. Okay. People from there. I know it sounds weird. How could she do it with music? But I do my work with music. Okay. I love, and I like doing stuff with like Satnam Kar. You know, I'll have music on like that. I'll come out. I like doing meditation, prayer, and then I do the readings. And it's just fun to have expos with music. Sure. What's the 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 highest vibing location that you've ever been? Like, not just in the U.S., but like in the world to where you, it's been palpable, the energy frequency that when you're in that environment. I'd say it was New York. Really? When I was, when I was at St. Andrew's Church. Wow. What'd you experience was, there? That was in downtown or man, it was in Manhattan or I can't remember where St. Andrew's church is, but that was packed. And that was a really great, really great energy in New York. Yeah. Wow. Have you ever seen things in your reality? Like, I know you're really tight with mother Mary, right? Like, have you ever seen her in your reality? I do. Really? Yeah. Like physical reality with your, with your eyes here, you can see mother Mary. I, it's, I don't know. Well, I don't know if it's seeing her, but I transport myself over to Lourdes. Really? Yes. When I'm doing the healings. Wow. So what are you experiencing there? It's a physical transportation of me over there while I'm laying hands. Are you having this issue there with you? Yes. So we do a Mother Mary circle. We've been doing it for like seven, eight years. And people come in from all over the world. We do it in Spanish and English. People are healed in those rooms too. It's free for people. Oh, that's awesome. On my what, website. What's the conversation like when you work with Mother Mary? It's mostly her energy just coming through. And it's just very peaceful and calm and loving. Yeah. Yeah. What does she look like? Is it traditional photographs of her? It's not really a look or anything. It's just a heart space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just a feeling wow. and a blessing coming over. Did you grow up Catholic or um, in the in Christianity? It's interesting because my mother is full-blown Italian Catholic. Okay. Um, and the family spoke in Italian and they all worshipped 
you know, Christ and Jesus and everything, but we were raised in a home of Judaism. Really? Wow. My stepmother was Jewish and I was converted to Judaism when I was little. Wow. Um, I, but I always went to church and I always had Mary under my pillow and I was always um, de devoted to Mary. Mm. Have you seen any other saints? Um, I've always been close to St. Anthony, St. Francis, Jesus, um, uh, gosh, very close, very close to St. Anne, her mother. Okay. And when I've done some healings on people, like brought back their hearing, um, dissolved uh, uh, tumors, um, lots of cancerous breast lumps i've seen saint anne that's awesome yeah saint anne. that's awesome um i can't believe i waited this long to ask you this question but like what what are your thoughts on like why people get cancer why they get illness is it um genetic or do you think it's in the environment i think a couple of reasons i think it's environmental i think it's also shame i think it's childhood abuse sometimes hmm. i do feel that I do feel it can be sort of like an inner pain. Um, I don't feel it's anything that we've ever done consciously uh, to get it. But I do feel sometimes it can be an inner inner pain of not releasing something from childhood. Sure. Do you feel it? Do you take it on when you heal it? It's fascinating because so many people that are healers and there's so many wonderful healers out there. And many come to me and ask me, I can't believe you just did that. And you're so cheerful. <laughs> but because I am not doing it, because it's not me, it's absolutely them. It's either Mary or one of the saints or the Holy Spirit. They take on my body. I feel 100% fine. I could be doing this major work. And next minute in the car, drinking a milkshake, laughing and having French fries. I'm giggling and acting like nothing, but something's completely gone off a person's body. Yeah, that mm -hmm. intense. Or I've had people like, I don't know if you've ever, ever interviewed Alan Steinfeld. Or, I have, I have Alan, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he's produced a lot of my events. He's had me, he said, you completely were out about 10 minutes in the car unconscious. And I was so worried I ha might have to take you to the hospital. So I've blacked out after. So have you seen like physical lumps just disappear on people when you heal that's them? What, that's what happens. Yeah. 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 He has too. He's filmed them. Wow. That's so awesome. Has he, um, I guess, has he posted those before? Or did he, did he just have them locked up in the ar archives? Well, they're in the, they're in my documented book and I okay. think posted them too we have documentaries yeah i'm so curious like what's a day in the life of kimberly meredith the, heal the healer like what is a what does a typical day look like for you <laughs> um it's interesting um i usually go to the office like around nine um or eight and i do some sessions there and then i usually do some sessions on zoom and I do my, I always meditate for at least an hour and then I sing my gratitudes, but I'm always, always walking with a lot of the guides, the saints and the guides. Today I was with um, the monks because they were at the monastery mm -hmm. and they saw me and I said, what do you think of what I'm doing? And they said, this is a gift. <laughs> I said, are you against it? Because, you know, a lot of them don't like mediums. Sure. And, and they said, well, it's more like you're a prophecy medium. Oh, wow. So they weren't against me, but I thought they might be. Sure. You just never know, right? You just never know yeah. sometimes. But they were fine. They were like, no, this is a gift from God. Wow. <laughs> have you seen like like a prophecy medium? Like, have you seen future timelines? Yes. Yeah. Can you change future? Can you change timelines? Like, let's just say, like someone that's comes to I, you. 
yeah, that's what I'm doing when I'm going over to the Lord's. I think that's when I'm doing the timelines. Okay. So that's, that's the healing. But what are like, if like if someone wants to change their entire reality, not for healing, but like, let's say career relationships, whatever, uh, how, how do they change their, their timelines? Um, well, I feel like you have to change your timeline if you're going to be healed completely, like of some serious disease. I feel like that's what I do a lot when I'm taking people through a DNA activational healing of their tissues. I feel like if you've got like four stage, um, you know, carcinomas of different types of things like that, or some major diseases, you actually have to leave that dimension that you got sick, if that's really that kind of timeline, and go into this higher dimension, fifth dimension timeline. I feel like even me, you know, I've been sick since my NDEs. Um, and I've healed myself by jumping into a different timeline. So we could jump around all the time. It's, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. But I feel like people think it is. Have you seen your future? Like timeline? Have you seen your future? Like, you know, I mean, do you even tap into that? No, I don't go into my future so much, but I do know they like us, my guides. They don't like us to stay in the past. When we go into the past, it doesn't serve us anything. They like us to kind of stay in the present moment, but keep moving forward. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm so fascinated with like quantum jumping, quant yeah. Uh, yeah, quantum jumping where... Uh, Bert Goldman, I think is his name, where yeah. you go into this altered state of consciousness and you uh, consult that highest version of yourself that's really good at whatever it is that you yes. want to achieve. And they yes. give you guidance and then you bring it back into this timeline and then start working on those tips and tools to kind of readjust that timeline to go in that direction. Yes, Mike, uh, Jack Canfield's into that a lot too. And so is that guy that wrote The Time Traveler. Mm. His name, Michael... I don't know. I don't know that book. Time traveler. And I'm sort of a time traveler because oh, really having the near death experiences, I've lived many lives in one life. I'm not living the life I had in the past lives. I'm living a total different life and I can travel to other dimensions. So, and because if I'm taking people from total death to total recovery, I have to have them travel outside of their their DNA that's damaged, especially yeah. if doctors are telling them they only have a few weeks to live. Sure. Oh my goodness, girl. There's so many questions I have for you right now. <laughs> I'd love to come back. <laughs> uh, what is hidden like, like in the DNA? Like what are the possibilities of the human species that is latent in our DNA structures? I feel like most of it is just... Um, I, I don't know. They're just, I'm just hearing them say trauma. Um, I feel like it most, it could be just like the first three or four years when we're born, a lot of dark childhood traumas can happen and that's going to stick in there. It's like all the good things that could happen. One bad is going to stick. Sure. It's like unbelievable. Every positive thing could happen to you in the first three years. And one bad, one, one bad, bad thing ruins the apple cart. Come on, man. So you're um, 60 years old. I know. And you just keep reliving that pattern. You don't even know it because it's unconscious. I have people sign up for my mentorship program. And um, it's not, it's a, it's a great cost, but I can help them in my mentorship program. I have a good mentorship program where I go in there, reprogram their brain. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's, to try to do, get rid of you that do one do everything thing, one wow <laughs> you're like <laughs> yeah what don't you do is probably an easier question i don't cook that much <laughs> oh well there you go um so when you go to different dimensions like which like have you seen like just to, like i don't know i mean I, I can only imagine what the dimensions are like out there but what is your favorite dimension to travel to well god is saying um they they like me to work with the afterlife they they like me to work and help people get connected with their right now they're just saying 
you know, the fifth dimension is where they're keeping me at right now. Mm -hmm. And they like people to connect to their soulmates. They want people to have relationships right now. They don't want people to be alone. Mm -hmm. Since having all this experience, do you still have fear? Do you still work with fear like do you, or doubt? I would say, I would say, yes, sometimes I do. It's minimal. Like the fears that I have are probably not the same that they did like before the NDEs and before I started working on this work that I have right now. There are different types of fear. It's mm -hmm. not the same fear that I had, but it doesn't last as long. That's how you know you're in a higher frequency. The fears I would have before would last, you know, long. You know, this is like a small fear. And then the the Holy Spirit fills me up with so much love and, and confidence because I know I'm being carried by God. I know God is with me and God will always hold me and God will feel me and God will carry me um, and always be there for me and always be there for all of us. If we have that faith, the faith is, the faith is so important. Sure. You've traveled a lot and you met a lot of, a ton of different people. Have you ever met someone like that you can consider a saint or someone that's highly, you know, like a realized individual? Yeah, I have met a lot of people so far. Um, It's interesting, you know, how I know when somebody is really of, I get chills, you know, really so beautiful and amazing. You know, I look in their eyes and they, they contemplate before they speak and they're kind and they're gentle and compassionate and loving and um, they would give you their last dollar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think through these last few years who I've met like that. Um, I, I really connected um, to a woman that, you know, was sad. She passed away. Her name was Guru Jagat. Did you ever know about her? Mm -mm. Yeah, she owned a healing institute in New York City. And she owned a healing institute in LA. And she she was one of the first people to let me into her healing institute. And she fell and broke her ankle the same time I fell off the stage the same weekend and broke my wrist and arm. Wow. And she actually went into the hospital and she went for surgery and she got a clot and she died. Oh, wow. Yeah. She was a very beautiful guru, beautiful saint kind of energy. She wanted to do the Mother Mary uh, retreat with me. Oh, wow. Yeah. But she was pretty famous, pretty well-known person coming up. And um, she said to me, um, we're here to share peace. And she wasn't like uh, somebody that wanted all the fame, but she was becoming pretty, pretty big. Yeah, her name is mm -hmm. Guru Jagat. I have to check her out and see what you know. See if I can find her some of her teachings. That's a yeah. Her teachings were really beautiful. Yeah, I really, really like, really liked her a lot. Wow. Uh, so, last question because this is my curiosity now. Uh, and I know, I know, we talked about it a while ago in our first conversation. But like, what was the, the afterlife like for you? Well, it changed, well, it changed everything because I had a totally different life before. Um, it, when it was happening, I was, while it was happening, I didn't have any fear because I was on the other side. So I felt it, it was very fast. So I don't know how other people explain it, but for me, it goes like that. It's so fast and it's like in chopping, like it's like you're in a film going ch -ch 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 like that. It felt very comforting to be with the Holy Spirit, but very fast. And yet I still see like a lot of times I try to think back about it. I see a lot of things that are not in my book that I wish kind of were in the book. 
Mm-hmm. I see a lot of um a lot of shapes of figures coming at me that were like my grandmother, my great grandmother. I see, I definitely know I saw Jesus coming straight at my face and a lot of light going through my eyes because my eyes were never blinking like this or communicating. And that I think was like the push to the eyes. And I do feel that I feel more comforted now. I was not that I was afraid of ever dying. I don't know if you're afraid of dying, but I always kind of had a little fear of death, Mm -hmm. but I don't have any fear now of death because I was over there. So I felt like, Oh, here I am. And it's calm, you know, and it's like, huh, like that. But then it was like, I also remember kind of going there and then here where they shoved me over on my face because they were trying to go into the back of my skull and do procedures on me. Ugh. And then they threw me back over again. And my fiance said they were doing work on me. So it was like kind of in and out, you know, and like a lot, a lot of harsh stuff to me. Mm-hmm. And then you came back with healing abilities. Yeah. So wow. it wasn't like a walk in the garden. <laughs> like, yeah, it wasn't a walk in the park. Uh, yeah, walk in the park. Yeah, that's yeah, as far as death. Like I don't like I would be lying if I said I wouldn't. I don't have fear, right? Because I I don't consciously ha- remember NDE or had an experience where I yeah. experienced the other side. So to say that I don't, it, it's totally it would be a lie. I mean, I feel like the unknown, right? Like it is the unknown. And I hope that I am conscious in my, in, you know, that, that's another aspect of it too. Is like, what will the end of the road look like? Will it, you know, like, I don't want to know because yeah. I feel like, you know, who wants to know their death? Um, but I feel like I just want to be, I want to have courage and step into that. And I would like to, to imagine that I would be conscious, you know, consciously dying yeah. to where I can keep a, um, a conscious thought on the in process and be aware of the, the entire step of the way, right. Until, you know, yeah. And, and consciously experience that transition. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. The interesting thing about all of this is that when I came into the world, I was this little kind of, I don't know if you would say like little Buddha girl, but I would constantly say like as early as like three years old to my grandmother, um, don't die. I was obsessed with death. Very young. I would say, don't die. Don't die, grandma. Don't die. I was so afraid of her dying. And I would say, I'm reincarnated. Hmm. I'm reincarnated. Like constantly. I was obsessed with it. And she'd say, who told you that word? I wouldn't answer. I just kept saying, I'm reincarnated. Look at my hands. I'm reincarnated. They didn't change my hands. And I would say it over and over. Look what I can do with my hands. And I would heal animals. I would heal her. She had horrible asthma and bronchitis. They would hospitalize her. And I would heal her repetitively over and over again. And it really is weird. And my eyes would blink. They would record it. They would take films of the blinking eyes. And then it just shut down after I was abused, you know, really abused with it, telling me to stop doing it, stop doing it. So it's very interesting how I let it go. I went on with my life, you know, moved on. And then I have the NDEs. Sure. And then they come back. What do you think the NDEs were were in your soul contract or plan or blueprint? It had to be. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just so interesting, yeah. Yeah. So, like, try to get you back on the path of what you were meant to do. And yeah. and the other thing that's interesting about it is that she dies two months after my NDEs. Your grandmother? Yes. Wow. All so, right, what, right. what I'm saying to you is that the afterlife, our NDEs, or just the other side and all that. We never die. We never die. So one of the main numbers, one of the main symbols that keeps coming up is the eight, the infinity sign. And that sign is what you ask me, what are they really trying to communicate? And they keep saying, 
we never die, the eight. So when people hear this and let's say they have a resonance with that message and they're really open to reincarnation and what does that do for them? You know, does that eliminate fear? How can I, they live? How can they move I, forward in their lives? It doesn't give fear. It makes you understand that when we cross over, when we all end up dying one day, we can come back if we choose. Or a lot of people are like, I don't want to come back here. But here's the good news. You're not coming back here. This is never going to be here again. Hmm. We are evolving. This is a third dimensional world. If we come back, it'll be more of a higher dimensional consciousness. Well, what's the next step? If we don't, you know what I mean? This is never going to exist again. What's the next? We're going to have a world that's a higher awakening world. The what, does higher... That, what does that look like? You know? I can't tell you that. <laughs> but it, it'll be better than this. Yeah. Sure. After 2033, it'll probably be a lot better. 2033? Yeah. I'll mark it on my calendar. Uh, yeah, let's mark it on our calendars. We have to have a party. <laughs> absolutely. And on the East Coast, because by then, Awakening hopefully. To the fifth dimension. Awakening to the fifth dimension. Kimberly. Yeah, Awakening to the fifth dimension is a start of it. And then definitely moving forward, um, I feel um, better world, better times, better place. I love it. Kimberly, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for like, just, you know, chopping it up with me. <laughs> yes. So, so where, what's the website? Where can people go to find oh, you? Yeah. So my website, I was going to say it was awakening. So it's the healing trilogy, the healing trilogy.com. Awesome. Any last messages that are on, that is on your heart that you want to communicate with the audience right now? Yeah, I'm really grateful um, to be here to be helpful for everybody at this time. And um, if you need me, I'm here for you. Um, and just if you get overwhelmed, just take deep breaths, just take a couple moments, you know, don't get over, you know, don't think that this is just, you know, the end all right now. You know, it's a lot of people out there out of work, a lot of people out there out of their homes, a lot of people out there are getting overwhelmed at the moment. So there are a lot of things in my book. There's some easy exercises, meditation, prayers. If you can't afford to see me, I have dropped my rates a lot to help people right now. And I do have free classes too. So please check out my website at thehealingtrilogy.com and um, just Take those deep breaths and just pray and know that God's here for you. I love you. 